You want to support Roller March Unfiltered? Be sure to join our Bring the Funk fan club. Every dollar that you give to us supports our daily digital show. There's only one daily digital show out here that keeps it black and keep it real as Roller Martin Unfiltered. Support the Roller Martin Unfiltered daily digital show by going to rollermartinunfiltered.com. You can make this possible. All right, y'all. Let's talk about... Lord have mercy, Donald Trump. I'm, I'm going to get to the booze in a second that took place uh, at the World Series. But first off, y'all, uh, on Friday, that was this weekend, that was a forum that took place on the campus of Benedict College in Columbia, South Carolina. It was the 2020 Bipartisan Justice Center. The whole goal was to talk about criminal justice reform. It was a presidential forum. Ten Democratic candidates were invited. Then Donald Trump also was invited. But things begin to change because Trump goes there and he doesn't take questions. He gives a speech. Then he gets awarded by the 2020 Justice Center, was ticked off a whole lot of people. They're trying to figure out what in the hell is going on. Sharon Kamala Harris, she lit it up by saying, I ain't showing up. And then Steve Benjamin, the mayor of Columbia, said, I will organize an event for her on the campus to allow all students and others to attend. And then when she protested, it caused the original sponsor to pull out and Ben the college took over the form. What in the world went on? I said, well, one of the co-chairs is Tashara Jones. She is the treasurer in St. Louis. She's also the Democratic uh, co-chair for the 2020 Bipartisan Justice Committee. Tashara, glad to have you here. First and foremost, I I'm trying to understand, okay, so was Donald Trump supposed to come there, speak, and take questions? Because this morning when I talked to the president of Benedict College, she said that was the original plan, but then the White House declared Friday an official White House event, which changed everything. What happened? So Dr. Roslyn Artis is definitely correct. The White House changed it to an official White House event, which means that then they took over everything, uh, who could be in the room, and everything. So once they changed it, it was out of our hands. All right. So why were they allowed to change it? Why didn't your group say, no, you are a declared candidate. These are the original rules. This is how we're going to proceed. And either you could accept those rules or not. Well, I, I'll, I'm not trying to throw any of my cohorts under the bus, but I wasn't involved in the discussions to arrange his visit. Whoa, 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 uh, hold we, up. You're the co-chair. But I am the Dem we have a Democratic co-chair right. and we have a Republican co-chair. And, and, and so I, I think of those as caucuses, right? So I, my responsibility was to make sure that we could get as many Democratic candidates there. Okay, but, but if this is a bipartisan effort, I, again, I don't understand how y'all work, but if this is a bipartisan effort. I would think that both sides are sitting at the table going over the plans, going over who gets there. So, for instance, uh, I was told I, I was told that um, that uh, Governor Weld, Joe Walsh and Mark Sanford were invited. Well, they've been sitting on social media. No one contacted them and they were trying to get invited. Do you can you answer that? I cannot, because, again, all I was responsible for was the Democratic side. As a Democratic co-chair, I was in con in conversation with uh, the campaigns that I could get in touch with um, to to see if they wanted to come to send them letters of invitation to confirm the details, to confirm, you know, to pass them off, to make sure, you know, what what part of the schedule, which day they were on, because we split them up between Saturday and Sunday, and that was my responsibility. So who handled the Republican stuff? So as, as far as I know, our, our other, our Republican members handled the Republican side. So that's our founder, Ashley Bell. He's a Republican. Um, and, and I know that he was in close contact with the administration to try to see if the president was going to come. But here's the problem. Why was Ashley Bell even involved? Because Ashley Bell works for the administration. Well, you're going to have to ask those questions to Ashley Bell. Um, and I can't speak for, you know, the, the wins or the whys or the whats. But what I can say is that we made history this weekend. You know, we had a major presidential forum thrown by a black organization on a black college, uh, one of the number one HBCUs, right, Benedict College. Um, and got and many of the students there got a chance to interact with and interview 
uh, the, the Democratic presidential candidates about the number one issue that's important to black people, which is criminal justice reform. But what did happen, though, of course, after Trump spoke, first of all, this award that he received, was it your group that gave him the award? Were you aware he was getting this award? Was that decided by both sides? Or, does, or like, how did that happen? So I unfortunately was not aware that um, that there was even a plan for an award, um, and I didn't I didn't arrive on campus until Saturday night. All right, um, so because, okay, I'm okay. I'm, yeah. I, 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 I'm just confused. I, I'm just being straight up. Uh, I, I'm I'm familiar with the group in that uh, I remember some stuff that in 2016 they were trying to get me to attend a particular event, but I'm really confused here. Okay, so this is just sort of how how my brain works. Mm -hmm. If 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 I'm a part of a bipartisan group, then I'm thinking that the Democratic people, black people, are sitting in a room with the Republican black people and both are communicating over all of the details so we're on one page. So you're so what you're saying is that you didn't know what the Republican stuff was happening. They didn't know what was happening on the Democratic side. You don't know that an award was given. I, I, so is that how business is done on everything in this group? No, Roland, and, and you're right. You know, I, I believe that this was, you know, a, a huge um, uh, fallout of communication within our group. And, and I will take uh, responsibility for for that as well because again I didn't know I was you know I'll be totally honest with you I was at homecoming at Hampton and I started getting text messages on Saturday saying hey you know did you know Trump got an award and uh, and I didn't know so you know a lot of our membership was blindsided but you know we're also learning a lesson from this um, you know we can we can either uh, take this as a learning experience and move forward in a in a in, in, in a more organized fashion or not. And I think we're going to do we're going to do just that. We're going to make sure that we are all on the same page, that every everything is communicated, um, and that everybody is on again that everybody's on the same page with all of the details going forward. So, for instance, so one report said that only nine Benedict students were able to attend. When I talked to Dr. Artis this morning, she said there were another 30-some-odd students. She said she counted them. The room only held 267. So who, who are the people who were invited on Friday? So, and even that, it was a White House event. Did they determine who got invited or did your group did? No, so again, when the White House declared it an official visit, they made all of the invitations. So it was South Carolina, uh, politicians and and their guests and White House staff and press corps. Uh, so when they take over, you know we lose control of, of the event. Uh, what? But there, but just like Dr. Artis said, there were more than 10, 10 students in the in the auditorium. You know it seats two hundred and sixty seven, um, and there were over thirty in attendance. What was so, so from your perspective? First, was it wrong for him? to be given an award. Two, was it wrong for this to become an official White House event? Three, was it wrong for him not to take questions? So just from my perspective, Tashara Jones, not speaking as the Democratic co-chair of 2020, so just me and you, no, I would not have given him a award. I think he should have taken questions from the students. And what was your third question? The third question is, um, should they have been able to take over your event? I don't agree with that. Um, but, you know, the White House does a lot of things that I don't agree with. So, um, send a I think that th Go ahead. This was, an this was an opportunity for, for students to, to have one-on-one -on -one interaction with the president, and, and that didn't happen. Senator Kamala Harris was supposed to be there on Saturday. She said that she was going to pull out of the event uh, and protest, was going to have her own event. Then we were told that uh, that 2020 pulled out as the presenting sponsor and Bandit College took over the event. You said you got there on Saturday. Is that what happened? Uh, uh, no, I, I wouldn't say that is exactly what happened because I spoke Saturday or Sunday morning um, and also closed out the, uh, the event by giving students the instructions for the HBCU straw poll that we're conducting with all the HBCUs in South Carolina. 
Um, but I will say that, you know, our staff was still there interviewing the candidates. Uh, every candidate that was interviewed on Saturday and Sunday was interviewed by a 2020 member or introduced by a 2020 member. Um, and also our staff was behind the scenes um, helping with production uh, for the event. So, so it was so basically it was still a 2020 event. Uh, in conjunction with Benedict College, you know, I want to make sure that Benedict College gets its due. You know, their staff and faculty and students really showed up and, and made this event a success. But it's, but it's also, to be perfectly honest, it made Benedict look bad yeah. uh, because people on social media uh, were trashing the university, were critical of the university. Um, and, and, and frankly, they've had to go into damage control. Uh, initial report said that uh, students were locked down in dormitories, forbidden to leave. In talking to President Arda, she said that it's common when you have motorcades, uh, the presidential motorcade right. coming. She said the same thing happened right. when President Obama uh, came to campus. Um, and so with all this drama around it uh, actually hurt ben Benedict. Yeah, and I would I would also say it it hurt our organization as well. Um, when the White House changed it to an official visit, um, you know, protocols changed and guest lists changed, and a whole host of things just you know were up you know just thrown up in the air, uh, and we had to adapt. Um, but I would say that Saturday and Sunday, I spoke to some students myself, spoke to some other people who attended. Uh, the students really enjoyed themselves. Um, and again, were able to interact uh, with candidates. I was backstage with several of them as they were interviewing Elizabeth Warren and, and really giving her some hard questions. Uh, so I, I don't think that that would have you know, we have to have these conversations about criminal justice reform and why not on a HBCU campus because it affects our kids more than anybody else. All right, then. Uh, I would uh, I would love to, uh, to connect with the Republican co-chair to have them on this show to explain uh, what took place. I think they have some answering to do and they, they need to do so and talk directly to black people because this was positioned as a black organization, a group of black Democrats and Republicans talking about criminal justice reform. And frankly, that got overshadowed as a result of what took place here. It did. It did. And that's unfortunate. But I also think that, you know, we want people to remember that, again, we made history by having this important discussion with uh, with 11, with 10 candidates and a sitting president on the campus of an HBCU. And one of those 10 candidates may well be our next sitting president. Uh, so they hopefully will remember this this visit, the time that they spent with with the students of of, eight, of one of the number one one of the top universities uh, in the HBCU network. All right, Tashara Jones, we certainly appreciate it. Thank you so very much. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Good All to right. see you. Thank you. I want to go to our panel here. Bottom line is, um, the, folk, the Democratic side people in this group here they got screwed. They did. And I I, I just don't understand how you have a bipartisan organization that don't do stuff in a bipartisan way. No, they deal, they're, they're, it's like two different organizations under right. one umbrella dealing with parallel tracks. Benedict College got played. What you had on Friday was a Trump rally on an HBCU campus. They flew in Republicans from across the country. Uh, this Ashley person... Ashley uh, Bell, yeah. again, who, who well, used to be a Democrat, flipped to Republican. Ashley worked for the administration. So, so he's, he's a founder of the group but, when he was a Democrat. But he works for the administration. Why in the hell is he involved in the planning of this event when he worked for one of the declared candidates? So, you know, basically, again, I, I, it's, it's regrettable that the college got played because it's always good to see people on an HBCU campus. But this was a Trump rally on an HBCU campus. And he did not And that's what he wanted. He wanted the photo op. And yeah. Walter Kimbrough, the president of Dillard, he tweeted, he said... I won't call this a Trump visit to an HBCU unless he took questions from HBCU students. And he, and he wouldn't take questions. Students were sequestered. They were told to either go home for the weekend or stay in their dormitories. True, uh, whatever, there's a motorcade, there is some security. But young people, were their First Amendment rights were shut down. Many of them want to protest. They were not able to do that. They were told that if they did anything, they would be subject to disciplinary action. Now, back in my day in the 70s, you, all you had to do is tell me I was going to get disciplinary action, and I'm like, okay, it's on. But um, young people these days are a lot more cautious, and obviously your parents are not sending you to school to uh, get kicked out. But this, it, this was horrible, Roland. It was, I was so disappointed and just repulsed by the way that man used black people. Uh, Avis, so now we know the reports that that the sponsor pulled out was a lie. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, it, well, here's the thing. What happened here was that the Trump employee, who is yes. the co-founder of this uh, organization, colluded with mm -hmm. the people in the White House to provide this uh, photo op opportunity for him at an HBCU where he could give them this, him this award. And I'm told two uh, people were for the White House were involved. Ashley Bell and Jerron Smith. The same Jerron Smith who went on Don Lemon's show on CNN Friday night defending what took place, I'm told, by Republicans and Democrats, mm. that they were heavily involved in the planning of this entire event. Well, were the candidates, were, were folks on the other c campaigns, were they heavily involved? That they they flipped this whole thing. It was and supposed to, on Friday it was supposed to be a speech and a Q and A. They turn it to a White House event, knowing full well they take everything over. Absolutely, that this was not. She found out about it at the last minute. But let me tell you, this was not a last minute decision. Nope. Okay, it took time. <laughs> you don't to move the president that. in exactly. the last minute decision. There's an advanced teams exactly. that are involved. Exactly. This was planned from the beginning, and she got played. And I don't understand how she can trust them moving forward to do anything understand. with them moving forward. I, I, just, I don't even I understand do how they have an organization. I yeah. mean, it's supposed to be a bipartisan organization. Republicans over here, Democrats over here. You're not talking. And but. Uh, it's the other thing is, I mean, President Roz Artis has talked about, has been very defensive, and she, either she got played or she colluded. No, no. I, I, I don't I, think no. she was in on I it. I don't think she colluded. I, here, here's, here's what I think happened. And again, in talking to her today, I think what happened here was, here was an organization that says, we want to hold this event on your campus. Okay, great. Just like ABC had the debate on the campus of TSU. They come to you and say, it's going to be bipartisan. We're inviting Republicans and Democrats. As the organization, you put the event on. Benedict says, no problem. We'll avail ourselves to it. We're in a state where it's going to be, it's going to be crucial to black voters in South Carolina. And all of a sudden, internal politics, where they don't know what in the hell is going on here, where well, Republicans are like, yo, guess what? We can flip this thing, and we'll get the we'll get we'll get the photo op of Trump coming to an HBCU, and we'll call this thing a White House event. And guess what? No question. It's game on. Yeah. Then of course, then all of a sudden, Senator Kamala Harris blows this thing up, says I ain't coming, and then according to artists, the rules were changed. She said that uh, initially the, Demo the Democratic candidates agreed to to have remarks and then a Q and A. Mm -hmm. After what Trump did on Friday, she said to me this morning on the Tom Jordan Morning Show, she said that they gave the candidates options. Do you want to solely give a speech and no questions, or do you want six, six, six of the, the original rules, question and Q and A? They all chose uh, uh, comments as uh, comments and then also uh, Q and A. But the problem, which I think Harris is right. Trump should have had to answer questions. Absolutely. Yes. He should have had to answer questions because he, he touts the First Step Act. But by asking questions, they would have been able to ask him about why is it that you are against police consent decrees? Why are you using federal prisons? Why are you sitting here uh, on one hand talking about I'm touting first criminal justice reform, but over here contributing to mass incarceration? Never getting to ask any questions because now it's a White House event. That was the game. Benedict got played. Yeah. And this is why the message to any HBCU moving forward is you, you should be involved in every, every step, of the, step way. of the way, all the planning, and you know what all the rules are, and you say, unless these things happen, no okay. candidate will be able to step foot on this campus to avoid the photo op and getting played. Absolutely. But, you know, what are the was, things... I was going to say super quickly. This was advertised as a candidate form. A presidential yeah, form. A candidate, exactly. He was not supposed to. It was not characterized that he would come there, Trump, to speech. give a speech. He but was supposed know, to be a form participant right. just like the rest of them. The other so, thing, though, Avery, But guess what? But again, you talked the, about all the Republicans didn't get invited. Right. Which, say, which, which says, Ashley Bell, Jerron Smith, how and to all the Republicans in this in this 2020, did y'all collude to keep the Absolutely. other Republicans out? Absolutely, and, and of they course did. they did. But the other thing, Avis, you said earlier, this is you don't move a president around; it's not last minute. No. So I do believe. I mean, the Benedict College has a security force. Uh, they have uh, people who do logistics. This was not a surprise. And I, I, I remember he was still coming. So first of all, the logistics side, he was still coming. What changed? Is that so? You had, this, you had the same advanced team, same security, whether he was in a form or giving a speech. 
The difference by making it a White House forum is that they begin to invite the other outside people. Right. That's the difference. And so, still, if, if I'm if I'm Benedict, I'm sitting here going, now, now if I'm Benedict, like, when all of a sudden this is a White House event, to me, now, now, at that point, at that point, if I'm Benedict, I go, oh, no. No, no, no. You ain't changing the rules. Mm -hmm. this, is, this will either be a form or there will not be a speech. The only problem with that, Roland, um, speaking from my former perch as an HBCU president, is that how does it look to say the president of the United States cannot come? There you go. She's got Democrats there you and go. Republicans on her So she's, so got... she's caught between a rock and a hard yes. place. Mm -hmm. But again, moving forward to any HBCU, especially dealing with this liar, Yes. Yeah. You better say to anybody, we gonna be involved in this thing or not. All right, folks, back to that whole Mark Unfiltered video in just one moment. Second annual Life Low Jazz Experience in Cabo, November 7th through the 11th. I will be there broadcasting Roller Martin Unfiltered there on that Thursday and Friday. Uh, if you want to participate, if you want to come out, it's going to be a grand time. 14 amazing acts. Go to lifeluxjazz.com. But if you cannot make it, you can still check out the live stream. You're going to have a guest pass, folks, $10.99, to watch all of the concerts over the course of three days. I'm talking about some amazing artists. Now, of course, my frat brother, Jill Albright. Of course, we had Kirk Whalum on the show last week. He's going to be there as well. Some of the other people who are going to be in the house, actor, comedian, Mark Curry. Oh, my goodness. Donnie McClurkin, Alex Bunyong, Raul Madon, Incognito, Pieces of a Dream, Average White Band, Shalea, Roy Ayers, Tom Brown, Ronnie Laws, Ernest Quarles. Man, it's going to be jam-packed. If you want to get the live stream, go to GFNTV.com. That's GFNTV.com. GFNTV.com. You can watch all three days, live stream, all the concerts right here on your phone, on your iPad, on your computer, just for the cost of $10.99. So we certainly want you to do that, and we look forward to the Life Lux Jazz experience there in Cabo. Now back to your Roland Martin Unfiltered video.